Get ready to witness the most wild and thrilling suburban adventures. That's right, today is all about stunts and daredevilish adventures. I am, of course, talking about Kick Batowski, Suburban Daredevil. Dropping on Disney XD back in 2010, the show follows the life of Kick, the quick-witted daredevil who turns his life into one extreme stunt track and lives each day as if it's his last. Having said this, let's buckle up and hold on tight, because it's time to introduce you to the main cast who will be joining us on this wild journey. Let's start with Kick. Kick is a passionate 10-year-old who's all about stunts. His biggest dream? Become the greatest daredevil of all time. Kick is a very stubborn person who never backs down from a new challenge. He definitely is the soul of a winner. Gunther is Kick's best friend. He's always around Kick, whether it's helping him with stunts, cheering him on, or simply offering advice. He often worries a lot about Kick, but he's always got a smile on his face. Brad is Kick's older brother. He's constantly bullying Kick, hitting on every girl he sees, and above all, he's super lazy with terrible hygiene. He's the definition of an older brother. Brianna is Kick's little sister. She's always competing in beauty pageants or recitals. Despite her young age, she's already successful at what she does. Brianna is the classic spoiled kid who always gets her way. Wade is the manager of the local grocery store and one of Kick and Gunther's closest friends. He's very lazy, forgetful, and you could even say a bit irresponsible. Despite that, Wade is definitely somebody that you can count on, as he's always ready to help the duo with whatever they need. Finally, we have Jackie, who's Kick's biggest fan. Uh, rather, she's someone who's just obsessed with him. Jackie's wacky and weird. She spends most of her time around Kick because she loves witnessing extreme stunts. However, her obsession with him starts to fade when something happens between her and Gunther. But before we unfold that, let's go step by step. So. Go grab your popcorn, put on your helmet, and let's begin. The dreaded Dead Man's Drop is Kick Batowski's first challenge. However, Kick's first attempt to conquer it is a total failure, as he ends up in a bush of roses with his butt covered in spikes. Hey, Kick! You're naked! <laughs> Brad, Kick's brother, is eager to record Kick's first defeat with the intention of making fun of him. The jerkish behavior of Brad motivates Kick to try again, and feeling more confident than ever, he asks Gunther to bring a crowd to the same place at 8 p.m. As Kick attempts to leave the house, Brad stops him, claiming that he's in charge of him tonight. Apparently, his parents made a deal with him to do so in exchange for letting him retake his driver's test. Yeah, Brad would definitely fail his driver's test, wouldn't he? Even though Brad locks Kick in his room, Kick manages to go break free with the help of Gunther, who creates a distraction. Just as Kick, Brad won't give up, so he chases his brother to the dead man's drop and joins the challenge to catch Kick and take him back home. But his plans fail. While Kick successfully conquers the challenge, Brad ends up in the same bush of roses as Kick previously did. This time, Kick takes revenge and videotapes Brad trying to remove the spikes from his butt. Another internet classic. Turning it into another internet classic. I mean, it was 2010. Look at what else was going viral at the time. Moving on to episode 2, Stumped. Kick is super excited as Billy Stumps, his idol, is coming to town. However, his excitement is short-lived as he misses his chance to meet him and somehow falls asleep. Kick feels totally devastated. However, Gunther manages to cheer him up by turning on the TV. Just as an ad with Billy Stumps announces that he'll be back in town. To meet his idol, all Kick needs to do is find a golden key inside a cheetah chug drink, as the ad mentions. Easy peasy, right? Ride shotgun with Billy Stumps? Kick and Gunther run to Wade's store to buy all the cheetah chugs they can, but Wade is already sold out, although he has his own secret cheetah chug stash for emergencies, which he gives to Kick for free. That's a real homie right there. Gunther helps Kick, well, chug the cheetah chugs, and after a while, success. They manage to find the golden key. But there's a small problem they need to solve first. How are they going to get to the arena to meet Billy? Kick asks his parents and even Brad to take them, but they all seem to refuse. Kick and Gunther try to run to the bus, but it's too late. They already lost it. Just when it seems like they've run out of options, Wade appears with his car and offers the friends a ride. Once again, Wade is the hero of the day. However, his car breaks down. So Kick thinks of an idea. Make Gunther drink more Cheetah Chug to spike his energy levels, in turn giving him the speed of a cheetah. Amazingly, thanks to cartoon logic, this actually works and the two arrive just in time for Billy's number. Kick enters the arena flying so fast that he accidentally pushes Billy out of his truck and makes the number alone, which by the way is a total disaster. But to Kick's surprise, Billy actually likes it, and Kick not only gets his approval, but he stole the whole show. And it was awesome! In episode 3, If Books Could Kill, 
Kit gets excited as he's just received a gift from Billy Stumps, a book with his autograph and a personalized message. Kit, live till it hurts, sign Billy Stumps. Sweet. However, while Kick is sifting through the pages of the book, Gunther accidentally bumps into him several times, causing Kick to pick up Gunther's book and Gunther to pick up his. When Kick arrives home, he notices the mix-up and quickly goes to Gunther to retrieve his precious book, but he's too late. Gunther has just returned it to the library. Kick thinks getting his book back will be a piece of cake. He just needs to talk to the librarian. However, Gunther warns him that she's evil. She'll never return it. Believing Gunther is exaggerating, Kick politely asks the librarian for his book and explains the mix-up. But she refuses, claiming the book is now hers, and closes the door in his face. Kick refuses to leave without his book, so with Gunther's help, he sneaks into the library that same night to retrieve it himself. Once inside, Kick tries to be as quiet and fast as he can, but the librarian discovers him, and before she can catch him, Kick runs away with the book he thought was his. After realizing that he's got the wrong book, Kick tries again but this time coming in more prepared with his bike. However, the librarian won't let it be easy for Kick, so she also pulls out her secret weapon, a motorcycle. Okay, the race begins. Aren't librarians supposed to be quiet? Kick goes after his book while the lady goes after him. Meanwhile, Gunther watches everything through a camera that Kick wears on his helmet. It's definitely an impressive race to witness. In the end, Kick is faster and manages to get his book back, and of course, the sandwich that Gunther once returned by mistake. I call that mission accomplished. Next up, episode 4, There Will Be Nachos. Both Kick and Brad start their mornings with uber happy moods. Brad's happy because today is his big party, and Kick's happy because, for him, every day is an opportunity to put on a show. The two brothers get ready for their day, but shortly after leaving their rooms, they accidentally bump into each other, causing them to take each other's backpacks. However, they both soon realize the mix-up. Kick's parachute opens in the house with Brad, while Kick finds a bunch of party invitations inside his backpack. Kick pieces the puzzle together and discovers that Brad is throwing a party that night while their parents are away. Naturally, Kick wants to join in, but Brad won't let him or Gunther inside. This party has a strict no dillweeds policy. Although Kick is determined to attend the party, so he and Gunther try different things to get in. They try disguises and even attempt to sneak in through the house's sewer, but nothing seems to work. Meanwhile, Brad tries to keep his guests from leaving the party as everyone thinks it's, well, pretty lame. We're about to raise the roof. What? What? Kick makes one last attempt to find his way into the party, and this time, Brad lets him stay because Kick performs a bike trick that ends with him falling into the nacho sauce. His trick is so cool that everybody records it, and the video goes viral. Again, look at what else was going viral at the time. Without a doubt, this saves the party, attracting many more people. That night, Kick not only manages to do a super epic trick, but he also got his brother's approval. Let's continue with episode 7, Knocked Out. After a failed stunt, Kick crashes into a TV store and sees a commercial about the world's most talented talent that will be coming to the city very soon. Obviously, Kick doesn't want to miss the chance to prove to the world that he's the best daredevil. So, with Gunther's help, he's determined to try one of the craziest stunts of them all. Jump a nuclear reactor. I'm gonna jump a nuclear reactor. However, just before the show, Gunther accidentally knocks Kick out by hitting him with a wooden plank. Gunther, not knowing what to do to wake him up, goes to Wade for help. Once there, Wade tries everything to wake him up, but nothing seems to work, until they try giving him Cheetah Chug. The drink wakes him up but just a few seconds, as Gunther accidentally hits him in the head again. Wade, you rock! Oh, come on! Anyway, with almost no time left for the show, Gunther, being the genius that he is, decides to continue and makes Kick perform the stunt while he's knocked out. Of course, while trying his best to guide Kick through all the obstacles and achieve it. But the show is a total disaster, as Kick crashes into the nuclear reactor. Later, and to Gunther's surprise, when Kick sees himself on the TV, he's thrilled. Turns out that his wish was to appear on television, and he succeeded. On TV, crashing, smashing, causing complete and utter mayhem, and you made it happen. Next up is episode 9, Kickasaurus Rex. Tired of people mistaking him for a little boy and calling him a shrimp, Kick wants to prove to everybody that he's capable of doing something big. Almost immediately, a man named Rowdy Remington appears out of nowhere and makes Kick an offer to do the football halftime show. Kick is more than happy with this proposal and accepts it without thinking twice. You are going to be big! Big? Big? I'm gonna be big! With Gunther's help, Kick prepares for the show, but is soon interrupted by Rowdy saying that all Kick has to do is wear a shrimp costume. Hearing this, Kick gets furious, as he definitely doesn't want to go out dressed like that in front of everybody. But he can't do anything since he already signed the contract. 
However, during the show, Kick, instead of going dressed up as a shrimp, shows up driving a huge T-Rex made of multiple cars. I guess he is capable of doing something big. The audience gets excited as they anticipate Kick handling the giant monster. Uh, well, at least they do until things get completely out of control. The machine is so big that Kick crashes it into the stadium's backboard, causing a short circuit that makes the T-Rex come to life. The T-Rex quickly begins to destroy everything, but just before the machine crushes Gunther, Kick manages to turn it off. However, everybody's mad at him, and it was undoubtedly the worst halftime show ever. So Kick swallows his pride, dresses up as a shrimp, and starts dancing, which really gets the crowd going. In episode 10, Battle for the Snacks, after learning that Gunther is returning to his home country because his parents' restaurant is not doing very well, Kick decides to help any way he can to avoid losing his best friend. Kick suggests they change the restaurant's boring theme to something more flashy. Vikings. Gunther's family follows Kick's advice, but things remain the same. They don't attract customers. A customer! Is this where I could buy some straddle slacks? Kick doesn't give up and suggests offering some kind of entertainment inside the restaurant while the customers eat. But this idea only ends up scaring away the few customers that they had left. Seeing that Kick's ideas are not good enough to save the restaurant, Gunther's family decide to close it and prepare to return to their country. However, Kick won't give up easily, and decides to try one last time to attract some customers, and this time he succeeds. Although his methods are somewhat questionable, since his strategy is to make people angry. First, he steals the football during the game, causing the entire stadium to chase him. Then, in the middle of a wedding, he takes the bride, making all the guests follow him. In this way, Kick draws a huge crowd to the restaurant, where he calms them down with the irresistible aroma of the food. Mission accomplished. Once again, Kick saves the day. Next up is episode 11, Obsession for Kick. While Kick is performing a trick, he catches the eye of a new neighbor called Jackie. Jackie quickly becomes interested in Kick, so much so that she calls herself his biggest fan. Starts a fan club just for him. Can I have your autograph? Uh, where do I sign? According to her, every great daredevil has won, so Kick can't be left behind. This certainly fascinates Kick as he's never had any fans before. Jackie starts spending a lot of time around Kick, not only photographing him and encouraging him to perform new tricks, but also collecting material to sell and thus promote his fan club. Gunther seems to be bothered by this, as he's clearly feeling jealous. He's slowly noticing how Kick is starting to show less attention to him and more to Jackie. However, Gunther thinks Jackie is wacky and has a deep obsession with Kick. He tries to show this to Kick, but he thinks Gunther's exaggerating, as Kick only sees Jackie as someone who simply wants to help him out. However, it doesn't take long for Kick to realize that Jackie is following him everywhere, even to the bathroom. Nice work, dude! That's a new record! Kick finally opens his eyes. Jackie indeed is wacky and is a crazy obsession. Not knowing what to do, Kick goes to Gunther for help, and after apologizing, Gunther helps him get rid of her. The plan is simple. Pretend that Kick is actually passionate about order, safety, and above all else, following the rules. Jackie, seeing Kick's drastic change, is disappointed, and she leaves him alone, at least for now. Episode 13, Snowpocalypse. Here we go. Kick is beyond thrilled to see the street covered in snow, because that means there's no school for today. Without wasting any time, he frantically searches for Gunther to build the biggest ice ramp and make the most of the day. But just as they're about to try it out, the school bus arrives to pick them up. This is going to be the best snow day ever. <laughs> Turns out their school is the only one that didn't close because of the snowstorm, all thanks to Kendall, a spoiled girl who convinced her dad to call the school and keep it open. Wow, what a buzzkill. Eventually, Kick and Gunther get on the bus, but on the way to school, the bus driver accidentally takes over the ramp they had previously built. Everything ends in a disaster when the driver loses control and the bus goes off a cliff, ending up buried in snow. Everyone on the bus is worried since there's no signal to call for help. Everyone except Kick and Gunther, of course, who are still stoked about the whole ride. Their worry grows among everybody, prompting Kendall and Kick to come up with ideas to get out of the situation. While Kendall suggests waiting for help, Kick decides that he and Gunther will go in search of help instead. After a tense moment between Kick and Kendall, who obviously don't get along, Kick and Gunther decide to leave. And who better to give a helping hand in the most dire situations than Wade? So the duo gears up and sets off on their journey to Food and Fix. To the Food and Fix! To the Food and Fix! However, on their way, they face several obstacles due to the snow. They fall into a sewer, get chased by Oscar the dog, and end up in freezing water. But Kick won't give up yet. After all, he did promise everybody that he'd save them. Meanwhile, the kids on the bus are slowly going crazy from hunger, and Kendall is trying to calm them down. Kick and Gunther are too tired to go on, and just when all hope is lost, Wade shows up to save the day. Together, Kick, Gunther, and Wade come up with a plan to return in a super cool sled, with Oscar as the sled dog. Kick returns to the bus and takes everybody to school, just in time for the end of the day. 
Definitely the best snow day ever. In episode 15, Runaway Recital, Harold forces Kick to spend the entire evening rehearsing the piano, claiming that Kick is like a little tornado that needs to calm down and learn something different than just doing tricks. While Kick tries to rehearse, Harold cleans up the mess Kick left in the house. Anyway, Kick is trying his best to concentrate, but he can't, as his desire to go out is way bigger than this little piano. Outside, there's two broken trucks, one with free ice cream and the other with a huge half pipe. Every boy's dream. What are the odds? My truck would break down in the same cul-de-sac as your truck. Kick makes various attempts to sneak outside, but Harold catches him every time. Until eventually, Harold needs to go to the store for more duct tape and Kick manages to go outside. Of course, he does this while keeping his promise to his father, not to leave the piano. That's why Kick, being the genius that he is, brings the piano along with him as his plan is to do a trick on the half pipe. However, to do so, he needs more speed. So with the help of Gunther, they decide to go to the top of the dead man's drop. <laughs> Kick speeds down the hill, dodging objects while playing the piano. He also manages to do the trick he wanted on the half pipe, but ends up crashing into a tree. When Harold returns home, he doubts that Kick has practiced anything on the piano, as he finds it completely destroyed. However, Kick assures him that he did, and to prove it, takes him to Dead Man's Drop to repeat the trick. Episode 16, Trike X5 Begins with Gunther giving a tour to some neighborhood kids through Kick Patowski's Museum of Awesome, a place filled with photos and important items from Kick's life as a daredevil. Among the exhibits is Kick's first tricycle, the famous Trike X5, the one he used to start performing all of his tricks. Me and this bad boy go way back. While Kick is explaining how he got it, Brianna, his little sister, comes in and steals it. Kick gets furious, not only because Brianna stole the tricycle, but also because she redecorated it with pink ribbons, unicorns, and a lot of sparkles. Kick goes after her to retrieve his tricycle, but he fails in doing so, as Brianna is more clever and faster than he is. That's why Kick ends up following his sister all the way to her pageant show. There, Kick soon finds out about Penelope Patterson, Brianna's number one rival. After seeing Penelope's performance, Brianna wants to quit. You don't quit in front of the trike, X5. But Kick encourages her by offering his tricycle for her act. As Kick always says, a Patowski never gives up. Motivated, she takes the tricycle and totally nails her act, beating Penelope. Brianna ended up taking first place. Good for her. Next up is episode 18, Box Office Blitz. Kick and Gunther are thrilled to see the new film, Rock Callahan's Zombie Motocross. But their excitement fades when Mouth warns them that they won't be able to get in because his brother, who happens to be the manager, is very strict. And who is Mouth's brother, you ask? None other than Pansy, one of Brad's obnoxious friends. Despite the warning, Kick and Gunther decide to buy the tickets, but when they try to enter, only Gunther gets a pass, while Kick is denied entry for running. I have a ticket! You're too young to see this movie! Next! Regardless, he refuses to give up and tries to sneak in again. Although he manages to get in, Pansy finds him and kicks him out. Outside, Kick realizes that Mouth also didn't make it in, as he was kicked out for dropping popcorn on the floor. Kick and Mouth share a mutual interest, since they're both huge Rock Callahan fans and want to see the movie so bad. Therefore, they decide to team up and devise a plan to sneak past Pansy and get into the theater along with Gunther. However, the plan fails, and even ends up kissing Kendall, French style, in one of them. Folks, this got 5 million views. This clip got 5 million views on YouTube. I think that yours truly might need 5 million views a little bit. The situation quickly spirals into a chase inside the cinema with Pansy calling for reinforcements to capture Kick and Gunther, who managed to defeat the ushers Rock Callahan style. However, the duo gets surrounded, and just when all hope is lost, the sprinklers go off, forcing Pansy to evacuate the people from the cinema and refund everybody's money, of course. Meanwhile, Kick, Gunther, and Mouth finally get to see the movie, just with umbrellas to stay dry. It's a mission accomplished after all, I guess. Next up is episode 23, For the Love of Gunther. After Kick nails a successful trick and Jackie shows up to take photographs and cheer him on, Gunther realizes they have a lot in common, as she's into Vikings, lingonberry pies, and clogs just like him. Gunther falls madly in love with Jackie. Yep, you heard that right, he falls in love with Jackie, that wacky girl. Uh, uh. Gunther confesses his feelings for Jackie to Kick, and Kick is definitely surprised. I mean, who could possibly like that girl? Gunther asks Kick to help him win her over, and even though Kick doesn't want to at first, he ends up agreeing. After all, it would be the perfect way to get Jackie to leave him alone and stop being so obsessed with him. There's a small problem. Jackie isn't interested in Gunther at all. She only likes guys like Kick, extreme, dangerous daredevils. That's why Kick teaches Gunther how to be like him. Despite this, Gunther still can't get Jackie to notice him. Not knowing what else to do, Gunther decides to try one last thing, 
conquering Widowmaker's Peak. As he heard Jackie say she would marry the first guy he manages to conquer it. Piece of cake, right? Gunther is all set up to go for it, but Kick tries to stop him, thinking it's way too dangerous and definitely not worth the risk. However, Gunther's determination is stronger, and he does it anyway. Kick accidentally ends up going with him and helps him dodge all the obstacles along the way. At the end, Gunther manages to conquer the peak and stags Jackie's heart too. Talk about a double win. Mm. <laughs> Moving on with episode 25, Exposed. After an incredible stunt, Kick loses his helmet and with it his motivation to keeping a daredevil. Seeing him so down, Gunther wants to help and suggests going shopping for a new helmet, but Kick refuses, insisting that his helmet is irreplaceable. Get another helmet? If your mother fell in the mud, would you just get a new one? Noticing that Kick is still so demotivated, Gunther arranges to meet him at the top of Widowmaker Peak. Kick agrees to go, and there he not only finds Gunther, but also the one and only Billy Stumps. Billy reassures Kick that he doesn't need a helmet to keep being the best daredevil in town. Everything he needs is already inside of him. Despite these words, Kick still feels a little uncertain, so Gunther decides to push him down the hill to make Kick feel that adrenaline rush that he loves so much. This definitely changes Kick's mindset, as he realizes he doesn't need his helmet to be the best. That's why Gunther decides to hold a Viking ceremony to bid farewell to Kick's helmet. But during the ceremony, Kick actually finds it. Now Kick Patowski is complete again. Helmet! You're back! I've been looking everywhere! Diving into episode 29, things that make you go boom. Kick and Brad compete to win a trip to Hawaii alongside Boom McConder, one of the best extreme stunt performers. Both of them dream of winning the contest. Kick wants to perform stunts with one of his biggest idols, while Brad, well, uh, Brad is only in it because his plan is to relax in Hawaii. To win the competition, both Kick and Brad will have to find cards hidden throughout the city that will lead them to the final prize, a skateboard wheel. The first to cross the finish line with the wheel will be the winner. Sounds easy, right? But it's not. Each card is hidden in a way that requires the seeker to perform extreme stunts, like going inside a crocodile's mouth or diving to the bottom of the sea. Kick has no trouble with the obstacles and easily collects each card. Four cards down, four more down. However, Brad, being the cheater that he is, calls his friends for help. Every time Kick grabs a card, Brad and his friends simply just steal it, avoiding any kind of risky stunts or effort. That's not fair. But Kick doesn't seem to mind, knowing that cheaters don't really win in the end. He continues with the competition and manages to get the skateboard wheel. However, just as he's about to cross the finish line, Gunther accidentally opens a can that shoots out confetti, causing Kick to lose the wheel. In the end, Brad grabs it and wins the contest. But there's a small detail. The contest is for doing extreme stunts, not for relaxing in Hawaii. So Brad has a terrible time. And of course, Kick enjoys Brad's suffering. Not only that, but he also enjoys the company of Boom McConder as Brad is too weak to continue stunts with him. I'm just glad mom and dad made you take me to Hawaii. It wasn't supposed to be like this! Episode 33, Abandoned Friendship. Wait a minute. With that title, does this mean the end of Kick and Gunther's friendship? Anyway, the episode begins with Gunther and Kick fighting over last week's stunt incident. Last week, the two of them did a stunt that didn't end very well. Due to technical issues, Kick ended up destroying a friendship fountain that his and Gunther's parents made. What starts out as a funny incident ends in an argument between Kick and Gunther's parents. The fight escalates, and Kick and Gunther's parents stop being friends. Your son destroyed the party! Because your son probably messed something up! He thus forbidding the friendship between Kick and Gunther. Gunther's parents think that Kick is a bad influence. However, they still try their best to keep in touch, regardless if their parents are in disagreement. They will never find another friendship like theirs. It doesn't take long for things to take a turn when Kick catches Gunther trying to make new friends, even though he once said that he would never replace him. Kick, not wanting to fall short, decides to start looking for new friends as well. Kick first attempts to befriend Jackie, who is no doubt ready to be Gunther's replacement. However, neither Gunther nor Kick find anybody similar to what their friendship once was. This idea of finding a new best friend is more complicated than they thought. Eventually, Kick and Gunther meet and start arguing. Gunther thinks that none of this would have happened if Kick hadn't forgotten that steering wheel for the stunt, which screwed the whole act. Therefore, he thinks Kick is the world's worst daredevil. Say the world's worst daredevil. Those words hit Kick close to home, and he starts to fight, the same fight as at the beginning of the episode. Later that day, at their special place, Kick swallows his pride and confesses to Gunther that he misses him. However, they know that in order to save their friendship, they need to save their parents' friendship too. So they work on that first and succeed. Everyone became friends again. In episode 37, Morning Rush, the old my dog ate my homework excuse won't work anymore for Kick, as he hasn't handed in his homework for months and is about to fail the class. Being a fan of impossible challenges, however, Kick proposes that his teacher that he's going to finish all his homework in one night in exchange for a passing grade. Kick gets to work. 
and by the dawn, he manages to finish all of his homework, just in time. Classes are about to start, but Gunther and Kick miss the school bus, so they decide to walk. That's a terrible idea. As the neighbor's dog, Oscar, chases Kick and eats his homework. I know the Heimlich maneuver! <laughs> Just forgot it. But Kick, being the daredevil that he is, doesn't panic. He instead comes up with another brilliant idea. Redo two months of work of homework in just five minutes while on the way to school. Time starts now. To speed things up, Kick turns the written problems into stunts, solving them faster. As Kick works, Oscar keeps following them, determined to get another bite of Kick's homework. Kick and Gunther try to avoid Oscar by getting into a nearby river. Their plan is to follow the current and catch the bus to make it on time. But the plan fails, so they end up being on top of a garbage truck. In the city dump, Kick realizes how catastrophic his future would be if he stayed back a year. That's why Gunther and Kick build a car with the things that they find in the dump. This invention is a total success, as it helps them arrive on time and submit all the homework. But things don't end there, as Oscar arrives at the school and eats Kick's homework in front of his teacher. Talk about rough luck. Episode 40 and action starts with the entire family watching Tina sometimes. Kick is the least enthusiastic since he thinks it's just a fake show with a fake audience. He's definitely not a fan. Later that day, Kick goes outside to perform a stunt. But wait a minute. Could that be Tina? During his attempt, Kick encounters a girl who looks just like her and is doing the same stunt. Unfortunately, neither of them pull it off, but Kick discovers Tina's little secret. She is a stunt double named Scarlet. Sometimes. <laughs> Quick, someone give me something to gouge out my own eyes. Soon, Kick finds out that Scarlet doesn't get the recognition that she deserves. In fact, Tina gets all the credit. Kick, filled with mutual respect, decides to help her be known for who she really is and get her name out there. However, things go out of control, as Scarlett quits working for Tina, making the show likely to be cancelled. Brianna, furious, as she loved this show, threatens Kick and asks him to fix this disaster, to convince Scarlett to be the stunt double again. Kick tries to talk to Scarlett, but she's determined to be herself and doesn't want to return to the show. Not sure what else to do, Kick decides to step in as Tina's new stunt double. Anyway, it's a win-win. The audience gets to see the show go on, and he gets to perform stunts. However, Scarlett is not exactly happy with Kick's idea. While arguing, Kick and Scarlet perform some incredible stunts. Without even realizing it, they've just created a new episode of Tina Sometimes, introducing Scarlet as a new character on the show. Mo Money is the first episode of the second season. Rock Callahan, one of Kick's and Gunther's idols, is coming to town and will be on live stage. As soon as Kick and Gunther find out their idol is coming, they run to the store to buy entrance tickets, but there are two problems. First, it's expensive. And second, and most importantly, there's only one ticket left. This can mean only one thing. Oh, Gunther, I couldn't. You take it. Okay. What do you mean, okay? Competition. The boys kick off a race to see who can earn enough money for the ticket first by cutting grass. The next day, as soon as the sun comes out, Kick wakes up motivated to start the competition. But Gunther seems to already be ahead with his first client, Kick's mom. Both of them begin to mow different backyards in the neighborhood. The competition heats up as both boys get close to earning the money. There's only one lawn left to mow in the neighborhood, Miss Chicarelli's. However, she decides to split the job and the payment, spicing things up as they want to be the first to win the money to run to the store and exchange it for the ticket. Kick and Gunther finish almost at the exact same time and start running to the store. When they arrive, Wade, watching both best friends fight over the ticket, decides to tear it up and give half to each of them, making the ticket completely worthless. This doesn't stop the boys from watching the show together, even if it means very, very far away. Next up is episode two, Love Stinks. As we already know, Brad annoys Kick constantly, but surprisingly, one day this suddenly stops. Brad becomes much nicer, which is unusual and even slightly weird for Kick. Enjoy your day! That's why, with Gunter's help, Kick decides to find out what Brad is up to. The duo decide to follow him, just to find out that Brad got a girlfriend, a cheerleader named Kelly. What? Kick and Gunther are both shocked and thrilled because this can only mean one thing. No more Brad. However, Kick's excitement is short-lived as he sees Kelly throwing away the chocolates that Brad gave her. This definitely makes Kick start to wonder if something is up with her. Gunther and Kick decide to follow Kelly to figure out what's really going on, suspecting that she might be using Brad. And they were right. Kelly's plan is to humiliate Brad in public as part of some cheerleader initiation. Realizing this, Kick decides to warn Brad about Kelly's true intentions. However, as Kick puts it, not only is love blind, it's also deaf. Beautiful. Brad doesn't believe Kick, thinking that he's just jealous. But Kick won't give up easily, as he not only saves Brad from public humiliation, but makes Kelly confess her true intentions. What a good guy. Everybody deserves a little kick in their life. Moving on with episode 3, Kick and Jeans, Gunther is working on a project, the Kick Patowski Museum of Awesome, where he collects physical memories of Kick's adventures and challenges. 
Meanwhile, Kick is trying to perform a water stunt to complete Gunther's museum, but fails to do so due to a technical issue with the boat speed. Gunther needs more pieces for his museum, so both decide to go to the attic. Great! I'll hit the teleportation switch! Ooh! There, Kick finds a helmet and a woman's custom, along with a videotape of his mom, Honey Batowski, who was once a daredevil called Honey Splash. Discovering this awesome secret, Kick thinks that having his mom to be part of the stunt is a great idea, but she actually refuses. Honey isn't up for it, since the last time she was close to achieving a new record, she actually injured her hand, leading to a heartbreaking and painful failure. However, Kick manages to convince her, and successfully completes her water stunt, collecting the last item for Gunther's museum, as they name it Water Splash. Ready for the opening, Gunther and Kick notice a huge crowd waiting outside, but not because of him because of Honey Splash. This makes Kick feel unappreciated, slightly demotivated. He leaves the place and decides to return home. There, after watching an emotional video of him and his mother, he decides to put his frustration aside and go support his mother on her big day. Honey is all set to break the record again and give the public an epic show, but sadly, she hurts her hand again, causing her to lose control. Kick notices that his mom is in trouble and jumps to save her from crashing. Even though Honey couldn't succeed in her new attempt, Kick decides to pay tribute to Honey Splash by changing the theme of his museum and dedicating it to his mom's achievements. That is sweet. In Episode 9, Truth or Dare, Devil, Kick is sent to visit his grandpa while his family goes to bring in his pageant show. He's not excited about staying with his grandpa since he finds him slow and boring. That's the polar opposite of what Daredevil's like. Once at his grandpa's house, he asks Kick to help him clean the garbage, and Kick, not having anything else to do, agrees. While cleaning, Kick finds some old pictures of his grandpa when he was younger. Surprisingly, he's not as boring as he thought, as he was a spy in the military. Of course, Kick wants to know everything, and asks his grandpa to tell him the story on how he became a spy for the military. You were a spy? Darn tootin' I was. To which his grandpa happily agrees. Years ago, his grandfather, who looks exactly like Kick in his youth, was the best delivery boy in town. One day, he was kidnapped by a military officer who recognized his exceptional delivery skills and recruited him for a top-secret mission. His task was to retrieve a package containing a potent rocket fuel known as Jaguar Juice from an evil dictator represented by Brad in Tankistan. He accepts the mission and is given a motorcycle to complete it. While parachuting into enemy territory, he gets spotted and chased by enemy soldiers. Fortunately, he manages to shake them off and reaches his first destination to retrieve the package. However, he soon discovers that the package isn't the rocket he was told about, but rather a scientist, represented by Gunther, who has the secret rocket formula memorized in his head. Well, all right, hand over the package. I'm the package. Wall kicks Grandpa is on his way to the final destination with the package, the scientist, in hand, the dictator's henchmen inform him about the secret formula for a super weapon. Grandpa manages to reach a plane with the scientist, and just when they think the mission is going smoothly, they get captured by the dictator and his henchmen. The dictator, knowing that Grandpa is just a spy, throws him out of the plane without a parachute while keeping the scientist close to him. Fortunately, he gets saved by a girl who's been a fan of him since his early days as a delivery guy. The girl helps him track down the enemy base and rescue the scientists. The dictator was torturing the scientist by chewing his food with the mouth open. But luckily, Grandpa saved him from his suffering and got everybody to escape through the duck system. However, upon realizing that the fangirl has been captured, Grandpa decides to turn back and rescue her. Once they're all reunited, Grandpa attempts to escape again, but this time, the dictator follows them in a tank, causing their escape to be much more challenging. For Grandpa, nothing is impossible, and they manage to escape. Once they board the plane, the fangirl refuses to fly it, unless Grandpa promises her a chance at marriage. After Grandpa gave a hesitant, maybe, she takes control of the plane. <laughs> and they successfully escape, even capturing the dictator in the process. Kick is amazed by the story his grandpa just shared. But that's not all. Seeing how fascinated Kick is, grandpa decides to take him for a ride on his motorcycle. Yes, the very same motorcycle from the mission. Diving into episode 10, Sold, Gunther is admiring his most appreciated Viking cuckoo clock, Coco. which he would give his life for, by the way, while Kick is preparing himself to perform a stunt. Unfortunately for Gunther, Kick miscalculates his landing and destroys his clock. However, Gunther didn't witness this as he was waiting for Kick at the finish line for his stunt. This gives time for Kick to try to fix the damaged clock and pretend nothing happened. But at home, after searching online, Kick realizes how expensive the clock actually is. But he isn't distressed, as he has a plan. Kick decides to sell himself in an auction for a day to get the money. Yeah, you heard that right, he sold himself. But there's a small problem. The winner of the auction is Jackie. Kick will need to stay the whole day with her, doing whatever she wants. The next day, Jackie runs to wake up Nick, as she can't afford losing even a second with him. 
Jackie starts doing everything that Kick likes, from snacking on his favorite cereal to watching his favorite TV shows, and even doing stunts with him. Kick starts to enjoy Jackie's company, and he gets overly excited about everything Jackie has prepared for him. She truly surprised him, and it seems to be the best day ever. But things don't stay exciting for long, as Jackie has started planning a wedding. Wedding? You and me, Kick! Kick freaks out and tries to run away, but there's no escape as she follows him everywhere. However, while running away, Kick notices Gunther crying. This makes him stop, as he knows that the only way to get the money is to marry Jackie. But what Kick doesn't know is that Gunther is crying due to the betrayal of not being asked to be the best man for their wedding and not for the clock. Nevertheless, Gunther decides that no matter what, he will attend the wedding. On the wedding day, after seeing Gunther, Kick decides to stop the ceremony and confesses everything that he's done to both him and Jackie. Gunther doesn't care about the clock. Instead, he cares about helping Kick avoid the marriage, as Jackie is 100% determined to go through with it. Gunther manages to help his friend by delaying the wedding as much as he can. So the day finishes, and Kick is set free from that auction agreement. Although the wedding is canceled, Jackie confesses that she doesn't have money to pay him. This discourages Kick, as he knows he can't fix Gunther's clock. However, after seeing the wedding gifts, Kick discovers that Gunther has more than one cuckoo clock, which in the end makes him feel relieved. Coco, Coco, Coco. Next up, we have episode 18, Cart to Cart. The best karting spot in town, Go Go Cart World, has just announced its opening. Kick doesn't miss his chance and goes to try out the place, as he's excited to drive a go-kart and get his license. Despite his sight being an issue, the supervisor decides to grant him the license. However, just before doing so, he receives a phone call and puts Brad in charge of issuing Kick's license. Today is the day the Brad becomes a man. Brad, who works there by the way, decides to test Kick's driving skills first. Seeing that Kick performs perfectly, Brad is ready to give him the license. But just as Brad is about to hand it over, the business owner is replaced by Gordy Gibble. Gordy introduces a new height rule, banning Kick from the track and firing Brad too. This doesn't bother Kick much, as he believes he's better than Gordy. Upon hearing this, Gordy challenges Kick to a race. Kick agrees, but with the condition that if he wins, Gordy must give Brad his job back. That's actually quite generous of Kick. But Gordy also sets a condition. Kick has to use the worst car available. As the race begins, Gordy, with his high-tech, fully equipped car, takes off with advantage, while Kick struggles just to get the car started. Even though Gordy asks for backup and makes a series of traps that makes Kick's race even more difficult, Kick manages to win. The previous owner, who is watching the race, decides not to close the sale deal with Gordy, due to his defeat, and gives Brad his job back. Diving into episode 23, Sleepover, Rock Callahan's first movie, Perseus in Pittsburgh, is on TV tonight. So Kick and Gunther are ready for an epic sleepover, but their plans get ruined because Brianna and her friends want to watch the Tina Sometimes Marathon. Kick and Gunther decide to do everything in their power to try to get the TV from them. Kick's master plan is to tire out the girls enough so that they fall asleep before Rock Callahan's movie starts. To do this, he comes up with a series of games to burn off their energy. Ready when you are! Partner! I think you're supposed to have your old sleepy bag! In the beginning, Brianna isn't too keen on the idea, but later, Kick manages to convince them that it's going to be a super fun sleepover party. The plan works. The girls fall asleep as soon as the movie begins. But Kick and Gunther also miss it because they fall asleep too. However, the next morning, Brianna surprised the duo with the recording of the movie that they missed as a way to thank them for making their sleepover so fun. Remember when DVRs were a thing and streaming wasn't? Wow, I feel old. In episode 26, Brad's room, the Batowski brothers had a big fight that ended with Kick's room looking like it was ravaged by a tornado. Their dad will need to fix it, which means that Kick will need to share a bedroom with Brad till his room is fixed. Definitely not a pleasant idea for both of them, as Brad lives in a mess. Everything's dirty and smelly. There's an underwear pile, mold, and even a chewed bubblegum collection, something that Kick absolutely can't stand. Anyway, Brad sets some rules for Kick as he divides the room in two. Kick cannot step beyond his side, and most importantly, he can't touch anything. Sounds pretty simple, right? Despite not liking the arrangement, Brad is letting Kick stay with him to prove to their dad that he's handling things maturely to earn the car his dad promised him. After a while, Kick grows tired of sharing a messy room with Brad, so he checks on the progress of his own room, only to discover that his dad has turned it into a man cave. This makes Kick totally lose it. While Brad is out, Kick decides to take matters into his own hands and cleans up Brad's room, which makes his brother furious when he returns. They end up fighting again, turning Brad's room into a total disaster. Now, Kick gets his room back, and Brad is stuck sharing a room with Brianna until their dad rebuilds it. Nice move. Episode 30, K9, kicks off with Kick gearing up to perform a dangerous stunt only to be interrupted by a dog. Frustrated with his failed attempt, Kick vents his anger at the dog just as the car speeds up towards them. The dog heroically leaps in front of this car to save Kick's life, but ends up injuring its own leg in the process. 
Noticing that the dog's name is Jazzy and her owner is nowhere to be found, Kate decides to take her home to try to fix her ill leg and search for her owner. During the search, the dog seems to be protecting Kick from all danger, saving his life on several occasions. Kick not only feels grateful, but also begins to enjoy Jazzy's company. But this soon changes as Kick realizes that Jazzy won't let him do any of his stunts. Meanwhile, Gunther finds out the real identity of Jazzy. She's a safety dog. Knowing this, Kick won't give up his daredevil identity for Jazzy, so he decides to continue with the search, or in the worst case scenario, bring her to a shelter. While searching, nostalgic memories of Kick and Jazzy fill up Kick's mind, making him have a change of heart and not to give her up. But once again, after sensing a car spiraling out of control, Jazzy saves his life. Not only that, but the life of the grandma who's driving it. Kick has a sudden realization that this grandma is a perfect match for Jazzy, so Kick gives her the dog. At last, Kick manages to find Jazzy a new home. Moving on to episode 31, Bromance. Another movie of Kick's greatest idol, Rock Callahan, is finally in cinema theaters, but unfortunately it's all sold out. However, it appears that Brad is an all-access cinema card for any movie. Knowing this, Kick begs Brad for the cinema card, but he refuses to give it, unless Kick helps him with April, Brad's dream girl. Kick agrees, but because he knows that the movie will be worth the trouble, Kick sets up a date for Brad and April, but there's a small problem. April seems to be more interested in Kick than in Brad. Naturally, Brad gets jealous and warns Kick that if his date with April doesn't go well, he won't give him the movie card that he promised. Since Kick wants to go to that movie so bad, he agrees to help his brother, and he tries his best to make Brad and April's date go as smooth as butter. Kick pays attention to every single detail, not only taking care of his bad breath and sticky hands, but also making him look like a real gentleman. This makes April fall for Brad, who promptly asks if he'd like to go to the tunnel of smooching with her. How about we go into the tunnel of smooching alone? Brad asks Kick to leave them alone since he feels confident enough to handle the date from this moment onwards, and gives Kick the access card. However, Kick's joy is short-lived when April mentions that she wants to see the same movie as he does. To please her, Brad takes back the card from Kick, thereby breaking their deal. With April gone for a few minutes, Kick and Brad start a fight in the amusement park. When she returns and sees Brad fighting with Kick, April decides that Brad isn't the good guy that she assumed that he was, and stops the date. Instead, she ends up going with Kick. I mean, that's a win-win. Episode 34, Attica, is all about bonding time for Kick, Brad, and Harold. While Brianna and Honey leave for a pageant show, the three of them stay at home. Kick wants to do an extreme stunt, starting from the attic and ending on an ice slide outside. While going up to the attic, Kick finds Brad reading Tankini Lumberjacks, which he immediately hides in a lawn ornament. Kick starts laughing, and they start fighting. Your best friend is a lawn ornament? <laughs> Brad hits Kick with a trophy, causing Kick to accidentally close the attic door. When trying to open it, Brad breaks the lever, leaving them locked inside. Both of them call their dad, only to discover that Harold was also hiding in the attic, secretly devouring the cookies that Honey told him to stay away from. It seems like they're all trapped. Their only choice is to wait for the girls to return home. But Kick gets desperate and tries something to find a way out. He notices a window, but unfortunately, he's not able to reach it. Meanwhile, the house phone rings and they manage to hear the message of the missed call. Honey and Brianna are going to stay longer than expected and will spend the night in a hotel. Which means they're staying in this attic for much longer than they had anticipated. Hungry and cold, the boys start searching for whatever they can to find to help them survive. They find some candy that didn't last long because Brad devoured it, and some clothes to keep themselves warm. Eventually, the power goes out, and Brad becomes convinced that a possessed gnome, a tale Harold came up with earlier, is after them. To lighten up the room, Harold switches on an old camcorder. When he spots the gnome, he smashes it with a hammer, convinced that it is truly possessed. However, Kick soon discovers that the chaos was actually caused by nothing more than a raccoon. The camera played an old recording of Harold, in which he's seen as the head of the cheerleader group. Kick comes in with a brilliant idea of using his father's cheerleading skills to reach the attic window by performing the reverse pyramid. The bunch of them try their best to make it happen. Although Brad struggles to lift Kick, he eventually succeeds, allowing Kick to open the window successfully. Finally, they manage to escape the attic, and their bonding time comes to an end. Episode 39, Jock Wilder's Nature Camp, begins with Kick and Gunther arriving at camp in the middle of the jungle. When the other kids realize the camp is for extreme adventure enthusiasts, they all run in fear. As a result, only Kick and Gunther remain eager to embrace the adrenaline-packed experience. Jock Wilder, the camp instructor, approaches the duo and asks for a volunteer to accompany him to check out a nearby fire. Gunther ends up going with him, while Kick stays behind with Jock's twin brother, Larry. Kick was initially thrilled about the chance to learn from the best, but his enthusiasm quickly fades when he meets Larry. Larry doesn't look like his brother, neither in appearance nor his attitude. Turns out that Larry and Jock are very different due to their upbringing. Jock's twin! Brother? 
Yep, that's me. While Jock was raised by wolves, and Larry was raised by chihuahuas. That certainly explains a lot. When Larry asks Kick about his brother and learns that he left, he panics as he's terrified of anything related to nature. He quickly rushes to secure the camp with an electric fence to keep them safe, but this frustrates Kick. Kick claims that he came to the camp to confront his fears, not to hide from them. However, Larry refuses to take down the fence for Kick regardless, leading to a heated argument between them that ends up damaging the electrical system and bringing the fence down, leaving them exposed to the dangers of the wild. The first danger they encounter? Cheetahs. However, with Kick taking the lead and Larry following behind, they quickly lose track of them by jumping into a rock in the middle of a lake. But just when they thought they were safe, they noticed another problem. <sighs> that was... <laughs> alligators! No, Larry, those were cheetahs. After escaping the alligators and a few killer toucans, they finally end up on a safe beach. This series of close calls seems to change Larry's attitude entirely. The adrenaline rush motivates him to want to outshine his brother, and he suddenly feels invincible. He's so amped up, he changes his name to the King of the Jungle. However, Kick thinks that Larry has lost his mind, as Larry decides that he wants to get a crown made of tiny bones. In the midst of his craziness, he starts to picture Kick's bones as the one that his new crown is going to be made from. Tiny bones for his crown. Nice. Kick sprints across the entire jungle in order to escape Larry. He climbs a huge mountain, and when Larry's about to catch him, a chihuahua, who is Larry's mom, comes out of a cave. The chihuahua starts scolding Larry, telling him she didn't raise him to be like this. Her words seem to get through to Larry, who immediately apologizes to Kick for his behavior. Kick and Larry return to the camp to meet Jock and Gunther, but instead, they encounter more wild animals that want to attack them. Kick and Larry are in trouble, as this time, there are way too many animals for them to escape. Larry and Kick start to lose hope when out of nowhere Gunther comes to their rescue. He's now the king of the jungle. Kick and Larry notice that Gunther has a crown made of bones that resemble Jock Wilder's body, so they both panic and they run away. But what they don't know is that the bones are plastic. In fact, everyone can purchase one in the camp store. Crown of Bones for Sale The episode ends with Jock Wilder promoting the sale of crowns, a crown that will make you the king of the jungle. Moving on with episode 40, Swap Meat. It's Harold and Honey's anniversary, and as usual, Harold has a gift for his wife. This year, it's a beautiful necklace. However, he asks Kick to hide it while he takes Honey to a school event, the Swap Meet, to keep her distracted. Kick accepts the responsibility and decides to hide the necklace inside an old doll in the basement. For extra security, he places the doll inside a violin case that he puts inside a baby carriage. There. <laughs> Good luck finding that. Be gone, lowly peasant! I've come to rescue young Betsy from her dungeon chamber! Happy with his hiding spot, Kick heads to the sofa to relax, only to be interrupted by Brad's whining. Brad, jealous that Kick is helping to hide their mother's gift, a task that was supposed to be his responsibility, threatens to burn Kick's skateboard until he reveals the hiding spot. With no other choice, Kick tells him, and Brad asks if it's the same violin case that their dad took to the swap meet. Oops. Both Kick and Brad follow their dad to try and retrieve the gift. Kick is motivated since he doesn't want to let his father down, while Brad is determined to prove to his father that he's more responsible and better at hiding gifts than Kick. Upon arriving at the swap meet, Kick realizes that retrieving the doll is going to be more challenging than he thought. Harold has already traded the violin case, so Kick now has to track the series of exchanges to find it. Both Kick and Brad rush to locate the case, but they encounter problems along the way. Brad, for one, runs into trouble because he damaged the packaging of a collectible doll, mistakenly believing it to be containing the gift. And now he's dealing with the angry owner. Meanwhile, Kick discovers that the violin case he found is actually empty. To make matters worse, Harold and Honey are on their way back home. Kick and Brad decide to head back anyway. Kick to confess that he lost the gift, and Brad to make fun of Kick. However, upon arriving, Kick finds that Brianna has the doll, and with it, the necklace. But Kick's joy quickly fades when the doll collector, whom Brad had previously angered, shows up and takes the necklace as compensation for the damage that Brad caused to the doll's box. This leaves Kick with a new doll, but no necklace. Almost immediately, Harold asks Kick for the gift. But just as Kick is about to admit that he lost it, Honey appears. When she sees that Kick is holding a restored doll, she bursts into joy. Turns out that the old doll where Kick hid the necklace was the very first gift that Harold ever gave her when they started dating. Although it wasn't the original gift that Harold had in mind, he keeps his cool, noticing that Honey is thrilled. Looks like Kick did a good job after all. Alright, let's continue with episode 41, Be Awesome. Kick is disappointed that there's no pizza in the school cafeteria today. The reason for this is that tonight will be the spelling bee competition. Therefore, in the cafeteria, they're serving a tuna surprise dish as it's rich in omega-3. What no one knows is that the only surprise that they will get is food poisoning. After eating, all the students get sick, except for Kick, who didn't even try it. As a result of this massive food poisoning, Principal Henry needs a new competitor to represent the school in the spelling bee competition. But his last and only choice is Kick, 
Xavier, a rival, explains to Kick that this contest is not for everyone and threatens to crush him. It's not your baby stunt thing. Spelling is a real challenge for real men. Kick loves challenges and agrees to be a part of the tournament. But Kick isn't gonna let this opportunity go to waste and demands Principal Henry that if he wins, he gets pizza in the cafeteria every Friday and Tuesday. Even with urgent training from Principal Henry, Kick is a horrible speller. Javier is going down in defeat. D-E-F-E-E-T. To get his brain cogs working, Kick needs a boost of A-D-R-E-N-A-L-I-N-E, -E, adrenaline. As the only way Kick learns is through stunts. The contest starts with eventually Kick and Xavier being the last two competitors left on stage. However, the final word costs Xavier the victory, making Kick the winner. In episode 47, Bad Table Manners, Harold gets a new TV for the house, and Brad and Brianna start fighting over who will use it first. To settle this, Harold decides to do a ping pong competition where the winner will be in control of the TV for the night. With the competition midway through, after Brad defeats Brianna, Harold decides to take part and compete in ping pong as well. Immediately, Brad gets defeated. Seems that the king of ping pong has returned. However, Honey is concerned about the ping pong competition, explaining that Harold has never lost a game, and with each victory, his power only grows. In order to end Harold's reign of ping pong terror, Honey suggests searching for a champion, someone with great reflexes and coordination to put Harold back in his place. Brianna, Brad, and Honey think of a perfect candidate to defeat Harold, and that is Kick. At first, Kick's not convinced about playing against his dad, but when Kick mentions that he will watch the gnarly games later that night, Harold overhears it and declares that he's the ultimate champion and will watch TV all night, every night, forever. Harold's defiant attitude motivates Kick to want to challenge him. Kick is ready to dethrone the king, but with one condition. If Kick wins, the family will never play ping pong again to decide things in the house, but Harold also puts his greed. If he wins ping pong, it will decide everything forever. Harold is determined to compete, but the competition escalates to the point where they turn the entire city upside down. After an intense ping pong fight, Harold is finally defeated. Episode 54, Last Fan Standing, starts with Kick finishing an intense two-week stunt. Obviously exhausted, he heads home to get some rest. However, on his way back, he runs into Kyle, an overly enthusiastic person who just won't leave him alone. All Kick wants to do is sleep, so he promptly names Kyle his number one fan, hoping he can leave him alone and finally have some rest. Unfortunately, Jackie overhears the conversation and doesn't let it slide, claiming that she's the real number one fan, not Kyle. The two start arguing, blocking Kick's escape route. Desperate to get away, Kick tells him to throw a party together, promising that he'll decide who the real number one fan is based on their effort. The first excuse to make them leave him alone. But his plan backfires, as Jackie and Kyle keep following him everywhere to ask about the party details. Fed up, Kick finally admits that he just wants to sleep, that if they were truly his biggest fans, they'd leave him alone. Both Jackie and Kyle happily understand Kick's wishes and finally let him rest. Just as Kick goes for his well-deserved rest, another argument breaks out, this time between Jackie, Kyle, and Gunther, who insists that as Kick's best friends, he's the real number one fan. In episode 60, Kyle E. Coyote, Kick's cousin is in town with tickets to the gnarly games. Eager for the event, Kick offers Kyle a cheetah chug drink known for causing extreme adrenaline boost, and it's also forbidden for Kyle to take. Oop, too late. Before Kick realizes, Kyle drinks it all. Kyle becomes too energetic and runs away from Kick. However, Kick needs to find him, and not just whenever, it needs to be before 8 p.m. because that's when gnarly games start and Kick doesn't want to miss it. Kick tries to catch him, but man, Kyle has got some serious speed. Kyle is on the lookout for more cheetah chug drinks. To catch Kyle, Kick creates a series of traps. The first one, Kick decides to put glue on the floor so that when Kyle goes past it, he gets stuck. That's a bad idea. Kick ends up stopping everybody except for Kyle. Kyle escapes from the trap and manages to down all the Cheetah Chug drinks in a truck that he finds. For the second trap, Kick uses Gunther's help. With the rocket attached to his skateboard, Kick tries to reach Kyle, which doesn't work out, and instead sends him to the moon. The third one is the charm, obviously. Kick sets a bear trap with a drink that Kyle enjoys so much as bait. After a long wait, the heat of the day prompts Kick to reach for the drink, thus falling into his own trap. After another failed attempt, Kick finally manages to catch Kyle. When he takes him to the camper van, a new problem appears. The camper van runs out of gas. Once again, Kick solves the problem. He ties Kyle to the camper van and uses his energy to move it. But after giving him Cheetah Chug, he gets so energetic, Kick loses control and falls from the camper van. In order to catch Kyle, he starts running after him, and the episode ends with Kick falling into his own bear trap again. Next up is episode 63, Rocked. Rock Callahan steps into the role of Kick Patowski in an action-packed movie where the city of Melilopolis faces imminent danger. A villain known as the Dark One threatens to destroy the city unless Kick and Gunther, who's played by Billy Stumps, give him what he demands. Clearly, Kick and Gunther must stop him, so they embark on a mission and march to the island where the villain lives, leading to an epic battle. 
As always, good guys win, and Kick ends up victorious. But there's more. Kick needs to know who's hiding behind the villain's mask. When he finally takes it off, he's totally shocked. It's Brad. Just then, Kick wakes up, realizing this whole thing was just a dream. And there you have it. The full recap of Kick Batowski Suburban Daredevil. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and comment on what show that you would like to see recap next. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. See ya!